Baird Rustin was born in Westchester, Pennsylvania. He was raised by his grandparents. His grandmother, Julia, was a member of the NAACP. Major members, including Dr. Du Bois and James Walden Johnson, were friends of Julia, and Rustin was obviously influenced by them at a very young age. He entered the Wilberforce University in 1932, but he left in 1936 without graduating. He packed up and moved to Harlem to study at the City College of New York. He got involved and joined the American Communist Party in 1936. He said the communists were passionately involved in the civil rights movement, so they were ready-made for me. While in New York, Rustin heard about the Scottsboro case, in which nine young black men had been falsely accused of raping two white women. He deemed it an obvious case of white racism and was outraged. Now radicalized, Rustin soon became involved in a campaign to free the innocent men. Then, in 1941, Rustin began a friendship with A. Philip Randolph, a socialist and strong critic of communism. He left the American Communist Party in 1941, joining the Anti-Communist Socialist Party. This was partly due to Stalin's order for the Communist Party of the United States to abandon their civil rights movement and to focus on pushing the U.S. into World War II. As a pacifist, he was outraged at Stalin's communism, and this, along with his new friendship with Philip Randolph, pushed him out of communism. But your own size. Most naval engagements fought by ships like your ship are fought at night. A. Philip Randolph and Bayard Rustin would continue on to co-organize the March on Washington together in June of 1941. They protested both defense industries and the armed forces. The march was called off at the time, however, because of FDR's Executive Order 8802, which banned discrimination in federal bureaus, though not in the military. In the presence of our God, I know that it is America's purpose that we shall not fail. In September of 1941, Abraham Meust, or A.J. Meust, the Executive Secretary for the Fellowship of Reconciliation, or the FOR, who was also later involved in the March on Washington, was very impressed by Rustin's organizational skills. He appointed him as the FOR's Secretary for Student and General Affairs. The next year, Rustin co-founded CORE, or the Congress on Racial Equality. Members were pacifists, influenced by the writings of Henry David Thoreau and his theories on civil disobedience. They were the same theories that influenced Gandhi in his campaign against the British colonialization in India. As a pacifist, Rustin refused to serve in the military. On the 12th of January, 1944, he was arrested for violating the Selective Service Act. His trial was held on the 17th of February. He was found guilty and sentenced to three years in the federal penitentiary. Other members of CORE were also sentenced. While in prison, Rustin was segregated along with the other African Americans in the penitentiary and the dining halls. Outraged, he led a protest to end it. He explained himself to the warden, saying that both morally and practically, segregation is to me a basic injustice. Since I believe it to be so, I must attempt to remove it. There are three ways in which one can deal with an injustice. A. One can accept it without protest. B. One can seek to avoid it. C. One can resist the injustice nonviolently. To accept it is to perpetuate it. Immediately upon his release from prison, Rustin began what he called his journey of reconciliation. He got together eight white men and eight black men to travel with him through the South to protest the segregated transportation. Even the NAACP was against the journey, saying it would result in wholesale slaughter with no good achieved. Rustin was arrested along with two others in Durham and then again in Asheville, charged with breaking local Jim Crow laws. In Chapel Hill, four members of the team were dragged off a bus and physically assaulted before being arrested by police. In North Carolina, they were arrested and brought to Judge Henry Whitfield. He told them, it's about time you Jews from New York learned that you can't come down here bringing your niggers with you to upset the customs of the South. Just to teach you a lesson, I gave your black boys 30 days and I gave you 90. He was referring to the required time to be served in the chain game. Corps got much attention after this and they gave Rustin and George Hauser the Thomas Jefferson Award for the advancement of democracy for their journey of reconciliation. Then, in December of 1955, Rosa Parks was arrested, 
leading to Martin Luther King, a Baptist church pastor, to protest bus segregation. The African American community refused to sit on buses or any transportation that was public until it was integrated. Rustin heard about this and went to help organize the campaign. Martin Luther King was arrested and his house was firebombed. Others were harassed, but they kept strong for 13 months. 17,000 blacks walked to work for over a year. The loss of money, as well as a Supreme Court decision, led to the Montgomery Bus Company to be integrated on the 20th of December, 1956. After this, Rustin became MLK's top advisor. They started the SCLC. In 1963, Rustin began organizing the March on Washington for Jobs and Freedom, to some criticism. The NAACP feared Rustin's former communist associations, as well as his imprisonment for both refusing to fight and homosexuality. It is now publicly known that the FBI had obviously been keeping a close track on Rustin for quite a while. And Storm Thurman, a southern white winger, tried publicly attacking Rustin, calling him a communist, draft dodger, and homosexual. Nonetheless, Martin Luther King and A. Philip Randolph backed Rustin. And the March on Washington quickly became one of the most successful nonviolent protests in American history. And estimates range from a quarter to half a million people were present. Speakers included A. Philip Randolph, Floyd McKissick of CORE, Roy Wilkins of the NAACP, and Martin Luther King of the SCLC. They all spoke, and each person and every speaker present owed it all to Bayard Rust. After the march, the AFL-CIO founded a new civil rights organization in 1965, the Philip Randolph Institute, and they asked Rustin to head it. Rustin did until 1979. He lived the remaining nine years in New York protesting for gay rights. He died on August 29, 1987. Oh